Do you ever feel like you're in a funk? Like no matter what you do, you just can't shake this negative mindset you have and you just feel stuck. Today we are going to talk about 10 ways to finally get unstuck and to start moving forward. Yes, we are going to get all into how to manage your negative mindset and how to turn it around and take the next right step. All right, let's go. Welcome back to the Multi-Passionate Mompreneur Podcast, where we choose to focus our energy, embrace our strengths, and move toward the compelled businesswomen we were meant to be. It's time to free ourselves from the chaos and the constant stream of ideas and build a life of impact and joy that honors our hard stuff, that makes meaning of our losses, and that helps us to make an impact in the world. It's time to finally take our power back and gain the follow-through that we've been desperately needing while also learning to leave the swirl behind. I'm Angel McElhaney, motherless daughter, self-discovery junkie, and not-so-master juggler of my crazy crew. And I believe you can have it all. So put down that to-do list, grab that coffee, and let's get to work, one day at a time, together. Hey guys, so today's episode is going to have a bit of real talk. Not that we don't usually do real talk, but I usually try to find the bright side. I usually try to be a little sunshine for you, (laughs) especially with all the negativity that you already have out in the world, but I've just been in a funk. And so I just want to tell you a couple things that have really helped me over these last really like two weeks of just being in this funk. And so yes, I have reasons to be in the funk, but I don't really want to focus on the reasons of why it is, but more so the solutions. And so in that, I just wanted to kind of tell you kind of what has helped me. Let me know if any of these help you and come and visit me over in the Facebook group at Multi-Passionate Mompreneur and let's kind of work through this together. So number one was experience your emotions. So whatever that looks like for you, whether that is journaling, whether that is venting, If you are going to vent, it's best to only do to one person. There's no reason that you need to keep going over and over and over, reliving that same story in your head over and over. But also, of course, just letting yourself sit in the ick. (laughs) So um, whatever that looks like for you, as I mentioned. And number two is unplug. So I want to ask you guys, what does rest look like for you? So I'm pretty 99% sure that I am undiagnosed ADD here. So for me, I find that I can't rest. So for me, what this looks like is finding something that is puts me in like a meditative state. Obviously, I, I can't like turn my brain off. So um, for me lately, it's been um, Procreate, that app, and it has this like pen that I got. Uh, it's called a Donut Pixel, but if you have a more up-to-date app, um, iPad, you might be able to do the Apple Pen, but basically even your finger will work, but it's very fluid and that's really calming to me. And I've even been following tutorials and like just taking the time to like, I guess it's like creative med- meditation, but that has really helped me lately and taking the time to kind of do that. I also know Thea, Yes, she's almost two on Saturday and she has this Zen board or um, we got it at the uh, museum and it is a board that when she when she paints with water, it's super soothing and relaxing, like satisfying videos almost. And there's that sort of thing. There's also I'm sure you've seen where there are these Zen boxes where it's like the box of sand and you smooth it out. And there's just something about that that like satisfying, like smoothing out, like mindless kind of action that really can kind of unplug your mind. I know other people might be a bubble bath. It might be um, actual meditation, maybe a walk alone, but whatever it is for you to unplug, it could be even deleting the apps on the weekends or at night or just having something for you I would recommend that you find out what it is that benefits you and what fits into your life. Like right now, like I was waking up really early and um, with a friend and going on walks when now it's cold, plus Thea has been waking up at the butt crack of dawn. So it's kind of stolen that from me. So you got to sometimes work with what is like your circumstances now, you know? So we'll leave that open-ended and just say, what does rest look like to you and to do something that put you in that unplug restful state. And then three, I think music. So I found that if you can get music that is more energizing or like 
going to get you kind of, um, I don't know, dance in the kitchen or movement or kind of upbeat, then that really helps me too. I know other people, they could, maybe this is worship music for you. Maybe this is some even song that takes you back to a place or a memory or experience that you've had or something like that. That could be helpful. And then number four, and this is plan something fun. So I want you something, have something to look forward to. So I don't know about you, but with the way things are with COVID and not being able to really like see as many people as we normally do or have the gatherings that we normally do, it just feels like sometimes lately there that you can't have as much fun to look forward to. So it lends itself to this like feeling of living life on a loop. At least that's what I've had to try to like break myself out of lately. Like I don't want to do the same thing every day. And so maybe that's the creative rebel in me. But if you plan something to look forward to, whether it is a night away or maybe it is even just an outing of some sort or a massage, or I don't know what that looks like for you, but if you plan something to look forward to, then I think that can help you get out of the the ick. (laughs) All right. Number five is write a letter of gratitude. So there's something really nice that happens, like almost magical, that whenever you put gratitude out, it just up levels your energy. So I believe that you cannot be grateful and wallow at the same time. And so it kind of is making that choice for you whenever you put out gratitude in the form of a letter. And then I think physically writing the letter while voice DMs and voice texts and calling people and writing it on social media is is all good. And I do believe that that's awesome too. Don't get me wrong. But the power of writing a handwritten letter, I think just really like cements it in and, and really helps you. So number six, be still. And this is kind of like that whole rest one. But I just wanted to also say this one with the use of, um, I recently found by Ariel, I'm probably saying that wrong, B-I-A-U-R-A-L sounds or beats. And if you Google that or go on to YouTube and you put um, by Ariel sounds for focus or for rest or for sleep, or I know some people also... Um, will listen to ASMR or different things like that to kind of like, biz, like almost, if you have are distractible like me or you have ADD or you feel like you can't make your mind shift off, that could be something that could be helpful for you. So today what I did is I actually uploaded, I searched Bioreal Sounds for Focus. I put it on my phone and then I sat it down. And since it was on YouTube, I couldn't like click out of it even when my brain would go to like something I wanted to do like oh I should tell her that or oh I need to do this it would kind of because I wasn't in a block where a time block when I was supposed to be on social media so it kind of made it to where I couldn't touch my phone either which was a good strategy for me I know that other people might end up downloading um, like a sound profile or, uh, or a track and then that way they can put their phone on airplane mode but I found this is the same effect because it made it to where I literally didn't use my phone. And I also, which I didn't put this um, in number six, but number seven is clean, which is what I did next. And that could be for you decluttering, purging, doing any kind of refresh to a space. I think that really does help with the energy of the space. So whether that for me, usually, because I don't really like cleaning, I'll do a project. So And there is also the magic of a project that helps you to see the beauty in something when you're feeling kind of like gloomy and gray. And so it kind of makes it to where you can have like this vision for what you want something to look like, a space or a function, maybe even a space for you. Like maybe there's this corner you could have where it has like words that that really resonate with you. Maybe it has a spot where you can journal or read, maybe... I don't know. A hammock inside the house sounds amazing to me. So where can I put that? That's my next thing, right? Anyway, so there is this like cleaning of the slate that happens. Plus you're physically moving your body, which I think is going to help you a ton, which that takes me to number eight. 
which is your health. So are you drinking water? Are you eating healthy foods? Are you remembering breakfast? Are you drinking too much caffeine? So there is something about the mind and then the physical body to where if you can, even though it seems like, oh, I don't have time because I'm getting behind on something because I'm all, you know, my pro- your productivity is halted whenever you just don't feel yourself, you feel stuck. So if you fo- you feel like you don't have time, to work out and make the meal prep and all this stuff. But it's weird because you actually focus on the physical self and then the mental part kind of catches up and you get more done in a whole day. And so focusing on your health, drinking the water, taking the vitamins, like eating not, you know, not eating all the Halloween candy that was left over or whatever that looks like for you, it really will help you to have the energy to do the the next right thing. All right. And then the next one is put your shoes on. And this might sound like the same one as health, but really it's, you don't even have to work out. It's just the act of getting ready, putting your shoes on. Even if you don't take a shower, just put your shoes on, maybe wash your face and you will get more done. You will take more steps. You will leave the house. You will get out of that funk a bit faster for that day. And then I think that also goes in hand in hand with your kids. If you're a work at home mom or, you know, that sort of thing that if they kind of get ready for their day and make their bed and like get their day going in a routine, because the thing is, is sometimes whenever you are homeschooling or you're doing virtual or you're, you have every, all of these pieces of your life thrown into one big bowl, it's not all segmented. Like going to work, pick, you know, having the kid time, you know, going to get them and then doing all of these separate activities. A lot of our stuff has kind of been like poured into this one container. And so it's up to us to kind of take that control and to put in some flexible structure there. I say flexible structure because I don't want, like structure too much. So I think that's my way around it. So you can still have that flexibility, but you have time blocks that you want to shift into. And so that puts us to the next one, which I think has been the most beneficial one through these last couple weeks when I've been in a funk. I want you to surround yourself with people that that know you when you're at your good, if that makes sense. People that, that can remind you of the good you have to put out that can remind you of all these amazing things that that they know you're capable of, that will give you those words, that will encourage you, that will kind of take away all of the limiting beliefs that you're throwing out, all of the lies you're telling yourself. And I want you to, instead of, you might even feel like, oh, I'm such a downer. I don't want to like bring these people down. But what you, what you'll find is, is that their words are going to fill you up and then you will be able to do the next right thing. And then That is our 10, but let's just go ahead and say you literally do one step. That's it. The next right thing is taking one step in the right direction. And so out of all of these, if you can find just one positive thing to do the next right step, you will realize that there is some aspect of choice and you will find power in that. Because I know that we can't always control circumstances, but we do have certain choices on how we can respond to them. And for instance, Thea's birthday is on Saturday and we can't really do a birthday party because of COVID. And then we have Thanksgiving coming up and, you know, we have, we're not going to be able to have everyone all together. And then of course my mom's not here. Like all of these things I could focus on, or I can try to focus on the fact that I, I have the choice to look for the good and to be grateful and to really put myself in situations around people and words and around really the environment that is going to help me to take the next right step. I hope that you find this episode helpful and I can't wait to meet you over in the Facebook group. Until next time, wishing you joy and abundance, Angel. Hey mama, before you go, if you found value in today's podcast or you learned something new, stop over to iTunes and leave me a review. I love hearing what you are thinking of the show and also connecting with you over on social media. You can find me on Instagram at angel.mcelhaney or on Facebook. So check the show notes for that crazy last name. And until next time, I just want to remind you, you are capable, you are strong, and you can do the hard things. Wishing you joy and abundance, Angel.